In this lesson, we'll create the shader for our wine glasses. Okay, so we're going to use the AI standard that we just created. So let's bring that image back up. Let's just have a look at what we're trying to recreate. With glass, we've got reflection on the edges, and we've got refraction in the middle there. The refraction is the bending of the light. So you can see the background, but you can see it's kind of distorted because the light is passing through and it's going to bend the light. And then we don't really have any diffuse there. You can see there's no color there. So those are the main visual qualities. We've got reflection and refraction and no diffuse. So let's put that into our shader. I'm just going to go over to my render view here. Just make sure that that's on. And then I'm going to go to diffuse and let's change that to zero. So it's completely black. And then we're going to go to reflection. And we'll change this to one so that we've got full reflections. Let's turn on Fresnel as well, which is basically going to say you're going to have more reflection on the edges and less in the faces that are facing towards you. And you see this effect in most materials. The faces that are glancing will have a bigger reflection than the ones which are facing towards you. If you want a little bit more reflection, you can use the reflectance at normal slider and you can turn that up to have a bit more. So now that we've set the reflection, let's have a look at the refraction so that the light passes through the object. In the refraction section, let's change the weight to 1. And now if you look at the base of that object, you can see through it. If you look at the base of our wine glass, you can see that there's a black shadow there. And that's because Arnold still thinks that the object is opaque. So we have to tell Arnold that this object is not opaque. So we select our object. Let's go to the shape node of our object, Arnold section, and we're going to untick opaque. Watch the shadow. You can now see that the shadow has gone away there. So this is the setting you need to set if you've got a see-through object. Let's do the same thing with the other wine glass. I'm going to assign the same shader, assign existing material glass. So now that we've set that up, let's adjust some more parameters. So let's go to the refraction section. At the moment, the light isn't actually bending. It looks like plastic glasses because the light isn't actually bending at the moment. So we need to change the index of refraction so that we're telling Arnold to bend the light. So we're going to send a, we're going to set an IOR of 1.4, which is what glass is. And you can get these off the internet. And now you can see we get that nice bending of the light. In the refraction section, we can also set Fresnel use IOR. That will set the reflection level based on the index of refraction that you've just set. So the higher the number that is, the more reflection you'll get. Let's have a look. So you can see there that we've got more reflections in the faces that are facing towards us. So the higher the index of refraction is, the more reflection you get um, with the faces that are facing towards us. Okay, I'm just going to set that back to 1.4. So that's the correct physical setting. You don't have to have that on. You can control reflection manually in the reflection section and you can turn off Fresnel and just set that manually. But we're just going to set the correct physical settings for now. So you may have noticed that the top of the object doesn't look like the light, doesn't look like it's see-through. And that's because we don't have enough rays to pass through this object. So we need to adjust our render settings so we have enough rays to pass through the entire object. So this model is made up of two objects. One is the wine object and the second one is the glass object. The rays have to pass through each of these faces. So you can see that there will be a face on the outside and on the inside of the wine glass. And then also on the outside faces of the wine and the other side of the wine as well. So for a light ray to pass through, it's going to have to go through one, two, three, four, five, six faces in order to get to the other side, including the wine. So you have to have enough rays so that it can penetrate through 
all the different faces that it's going to go. Let's just take a look at this in the scene. It's going to change to the default material and you can see that this object is one object, the wine glass, and we've got the wine as well there. And it's got a thickness to it, so it's got two faces on either side of the wine glass. Notice that for the wine, the faces are facing inwards, and that's how it should be, in order for it to look correct. Let me just undo that. So let's set our ray depth. We're going to go to Render Settings. So we're going to the Arnold's Renderer tab, Ray Depth, and we're going to change the Refraction Depth to... I'm just going to change it to 6, as we discussed. And now you can see that the object looks a bit better, and it looks like you can see through the object. All we need now is an environment so that this looks really cool, so we can actually see through to the background, because at the moment it's just black, and we need an environment around it so that it reflects so it's got more to reflect. So what we're going to do, first of all, we'll just lift these glasses up a little bit because it looks like they're intersecting the ground and it doesn't look like you can see the bottom of the glass. So let's just try moving this up a little bit. So I'm just going to hide this. And we'll go to the hierarchy selection, this button here, so that we can select the group rather than just the object. This is a group here. And we'll just move it up. And now you can see that we get some extra detail there because it's actually above the ground. Let's see if we can do a bit more. There we go. That's better. Now that now they don't look like they're floating. Just check that that's all the way out. Yep, it is. All right. So now let's set up the background. So what we'll do is we'll set up an image plane for this in the regular Maya way. So I'm just going to make sure I'm in my camera here and click on this button here. And we'll just pick background, background low. And we'll say open. And I'm just going to fit this. If I come down, I'm going to fit this in the vertical direction. So if you just watch the image here, if we go vertical and then fit to resolution gate, it should fit to the height rather than the width, and that's better. Okay, so now you can see we've got our, let's just update this. We've got our uh, texture there in the background. At the moment, you can see that it's not actually showing through our glass. And the reason for that is that by default, the image plane does not appear in reflections or refractions. So that's pretty simple to fix. You just go down to render stats, still inside the image plane here, render stats, and we're just going to go to visible and reflections, visible and refractions, and just update the scene. There we go, that's much better. If you want to get this back, this image plane back, just make sure that you click on this button here, the properties for the camera, and you can see the image plane is attached, so it's easy to get to there. So in this image here, you can see that it looks a little bit washed out and that's because of the color management. So when I chose that as a texture, Arnold automatically created a, a TX file. We'll talk more about TX files a bit later, but basically that's Arnold's format for textures. It's an optimized format for textures. So if I just pick that texture directly, so this TX version, you can see it's been color corrected, so it's been gamma corrected, and so therefore it's going to look correct here. So if I just say update, so that's a bit better now. So we get a bit more contrast and it's not washed out. And that's the correct uh, color space. Okay. So we've got our background there. But what we've got here is black. And the reason we've got black around there is because the scene is actually empty apart from the image plane. So if we just go to the perspective, just to have a look at this. So as you can see, we've got, we've just got our sky dome light. Now, you've got to remember that the sky dome light does not appear in reflections in the AI standard shader. So it does appear in specular, but not in reflections. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm just going to push this a little bit back so we don't get any strange things happening. So if I go to the image plane again and just change the depth here to 200, just to push it back a little bit, that's better. 
just update this. Okay, it's a little bit blacker now because it's further away as well. And so what we can do, uh, what I was going to show you is the text, the shader. So if I click on this, I can select the glass and then I can go to the shader. So if you look inside the specular section, not the reflection, let me just turn off reflections here and just change the weight to zero. So now we don't have any reflections. If you turn on specular and just come down and turn on Fresnel, so we have the same sort of effect, you can see that what we get is so what we get is the reflections appearing in the glass now, and that's from the sky dome light. So the sky dome light. So if you're using specular, if you've got specular on, that does appear in the sky dome light. Also, you'll see your your uh, light if it's in the view. Let me just see where it is here. So I'm just going to change my roughness to a sharp reflection so it's not blurred. That's better. So what you can see here is the area light in the reflection. So this is the reason that we're not using specular. Okay. So just to be clear, specular is the same as reflection, except you can control the roughness, so you can control the blurriness of the reflections. And so as part of that, it, it shows lights in the reflection. So you can see this light is in the reflection, the area light, and that doesn't look very natural. And also the sky dome light is in the reflection, which is what we want. But this area light is showing in the reflection as well, which is not really what we want. So that's the reason that I'm going to use reflection instead, and it will allow me to show you um, the environment shaders. Okay, so we're going to turn this off. And then what we'll do is go down to reflection, and turn that back on. Okay, so now you can see that with reflection, you know, you can't see that sky dome light, and you can't see the area light. Okay, so let's go and add some environment shaders. I'm going to just go to the render settings, press this button here. In the Arnold tab, we're going to go down to environment. And in this background section, you can add different shaders. This atmosphere is where you add fog, by the way. So if you click on that, you can add simple fog, which doesn't have shadows. Or you can have volumetric scattering, which will allow you to have the, the dramatic shadows and the fog rays that you get in water, for example. So in this example, we're going to go to background. We're going to click on this. So these are the options that we've got for the background. I'm going to start off with the most complicated one, this ray switch. And so I'm just going to click that, click on that. And what this will allow you to do is choose what type of ray gets what type of shader. So for example, anything that the camera sees, so this what, what this sees, you can change the color to whatever you want here. Okay, because this hasn't got any diffuse, it's not going to make any difference. But in a reflection, for example, if we wanted that reflection to be red, you can see that we've made our reflection red. Okay, so we've got a different shader for the reflection rays and a different shader for the shadow and refraction and so on. So basically what this allows you to do is put a shader in for refraction and reflection. So you can have a, a dome in here, a sky dome, in, in these sections for the refraction and reflection. And then the camera, you can just use this uh, image plane here, or you can put in a shader. Okay. So this is quite useful for optimizing your scene. So for example, if you've got a complicated shader on a character, and you didn't want that shader to calculate with subsurface scattering and things like that, you could put a simple version of that shader into reflection, for example. So when it appears in a reflection, it's going to calculate the simple version. So that can save you a lot of time. So anyway, so we're not going to use this at this time. I just wanted to show you that that's available to you. Um, I'm just going to click on this again and just say delete. And then we'll just grab the sky shader. This physical sky shader, by the way, if I just quickly show you that, if I click on that, you can see it's kind of a sky and it's basically a procedural sky. So you can choose what time, type of day it is uh, by choosing the elevation and the azimuth and you've got different options for intensity and stuff. So it's pretty much the same as most renderers these days. We've got a procedural sky. Obviously it doesn't have any clouds or anything in there, but you can use that as your environment. Okay. I'm just going to break that connection, delete, and we're going to choose the sky shader. 
So the sky shader is basically the same as a sky dome light. So you can see it says format, you can pick the format, and then you can map this with a color. Except it's not actually a light. It will give off light. So if you watch this, it's actually lighter. It does give off light, but it's not a actual JPEG. So we're going to choose low JPEG. OK, so now we should have that in the reflections and refractions. So this is the this is the dome here, and you can see it if you isolate the display here. If I click on this isolate button, this is the sky shader, and you can see it just looks like a big dome, just the same as the other one, except basically it's got slightly different parameters. So you do actually see this in the render. If I were to turn off the if I were to turn off the image plane, then you can see this a bit better. So if I press this button to turn it off and refresh. So now I've turned off my image plane. You can see that in the background there's actually an image there. So that's the difference between the sky dome light and this shader is that you can actually see in the render your your shader. So this is to basically render the environment and put an image like a HDR image that you might have or or some sort of texture that you might have. So I'm just going to select this and I'll just show you some of the parameters in here. So you've got intensity and you've got render stats. So I wouldn't use this as a light because it's not optimized. It doesn't use important sampling. So it hasn't got those special parameters that we looked at in the Sky Dome in terms of resolution and samples. So you can't actually adjust the, uh, the sort of quality of this, even though it's giving off light. So what we want to do is actually, we don't want to show this in the render in this case, because we're not using it as an environment. So we're just going to turn off primary visibility so we can't actually see it. We don't want it to cast shadows and we don't want it to be visible in diffuse. So watch the lighting here. We don't actually want it to give off light because that's basically making it a lot brighter. Okay, if you actually liked the result, you can keep it. It's got a bit more green, so I might just keep it on actually, but if you wanted to turn that off, you can do. Glossy, this is for glossy reflections, and we want it to be visible in reflections, so watch this. So now we can have reflections, and refractions. Uh, we don't want really refractions because what we're going to do is just use our image plane anyway, so that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to turn on our image plane again, press this button, and just refresh the scene. There we go. So now our glass should look a lot better now. We've got some reflections all the way around. We've got some refractions, so we can see the background through there, and it looks a lot better.